Hi, this is Stephen Brower from Martin Valley Community College. This is for CSIT 256, Computer Architecture and Assembly Language, and this is to accompany uh, Irvine Chapter 5. Um, the video was supposed to be going through showing the stack, which is what it will do, um, but it's going to be thrown in the middle of it an example of one of the routines that the uh, author has. Um, so I may have to take a moment and kind of mention that first. Um, so the author has provided us with a routine called um, write dec, um, uh, D-E-C. Um, there also is write int. And the difference between the two is write dec is for unsigned values, write int is for signed values. Now, the way that the author wrote those procedures is the parameter for either one of them has to be EAX. So even if we want to display a value that's in another register, we have to move that value to EAX in order to display it. So suppose um, as part of a program, we want to display the value that's in EBX, which is currently six. If I were to just call write deck, I would get eight because write deck requires that EAX be the parameter. So what we have to do is uh, well, yeah, I could just overlay EAX, but suppose this is an important value. Suppose this is something that for my program that's running, um, this is significant in some way and I want to hang on to it. Well, instead of having to create a variable to move it into, that's where we can use um, the stack. So what we'll do is we'll hold on to the value onto the stack, um, overlay that register with the value that we want to display, and then restore that from uh, the stack as well. So um, imagine, whoop, imagine this code here, um, and, and if I look at this piece here, the write deck, <clears throat> write deck is the piece that requires EAX to have a value. Um, but if this is what we want to display, we'll have to move it in there. So what we have to do is we actually have to back up uh, EAX first. So this first statement here, push EAX, pushes the statement to put something onto the stack, and then what follows it would either be memory or a register, and what's allowed um, is an immediate. Now, we're dealing with integers only. This is the integer stack. In Chapter 12, we'll see the floating point stack, um, and, and, and they're different. So the arithmetic logic unit um, is dealing with integers. The floating point unit is dealing with um, uh, you know, values with decimal points uh, inside of them. So um, the push EAX, what it will do, it doesn't actually take the register and move it. It takes the value in the register and then move it. Um, so when we do the push, um, 8 is copied onto the top of the stack. Um, the ESP, the pointer, um, moves. And this is just a logical thing saying that this is the, uh, the top of the stack. Um, uh, if we were just to look at this piece right here, what we see is 8. We don't know where that came from. Um, meaning that later if we do a pop, we actually have to say where to pop to. It's not that just we say we'll return the register, um, um, we'll, we'll, which we'll see later, that we actually have to say where we want to take the value in the stack and move it to. But this is what the stack will look like after this push EAX is done. So the value of 8 is pushed onto the stack, the ESP, um, which is the stack pointer, um, is advanced. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is uh, we want, now want to prepare EAX so that we can call the right deck. So what this will do, this will overlay EAX with the value that is in EBX, which is the value 6. So this will overlay, this is me just being lazy in the animation, <laughs> this will overlay EAX uh, um, with the, the value of 6. So now what we can do is now we can call write deck. And again, the way the author wrote his procedure, his procedure is expects EAX as the parameter. So what we'll see in terms of the Irvine library is that different procedures have different requirements in terms of what the parameters are. And also in terms of leaving results, those different procedures will have um, different registers where they leave results. That's the output of, of, of those things behind. But we'll call the right deck, and so what that will do um, is, since the value in EAX is 6, 
what will get displayed on the screen is the value 6. Okay, so now we did what we intended, which was just to display what was in EVX, but now we've got to put things back the way we were. So what we're going to end up doing is a pop statement. Now, um, pop means it's dealing with the stack, so the value on top of the stack is what is going to be removed from the stack, and then this is the destination as to where it goes. And again, when we look at this 8 here, if we just look at the 8, we don't know where it came from. Um, so the stack just has values. It's up for us to keep track of what we put on the stack, and then you know where we put it when we take it off the stack. So what the pop EAX will do is it'll overlay the EAX, which currently has 6, um, with the value from the top of the stack, 8, and then it will um, change our stack pointer because now we have a new top of the stack. So the pop, um, that 8 that was there, now technically that 8 is actually still here behind the scenes. Technically it's still there, um, but I'm not... I'm not showing that technically it's still there because logically it's gone. Um, uh, but um, the physical aspect of it is it actually is still in memory at this place. I'm just showing logically it's gone because now the stack pointer is uh, pointing here. Um, and so now our EAX has been restored. So if you remember where we began in terms of the registers, this is how the registers look when we began. The net effect, we got the thing displayed on the screen, which we want which we displayed this value right here. So suppose right now we also wanted to display ECX. We would have to go through the same process. So we would have to push ECX onto the stack, uh, move EAX comma ECX, call write deck, pop ECX. Um, so if we want to go through the same process and display this value on the screen, it would be the, the similar process where this would be um, backed up. So um, the reason why stacks are introduced in this chapter is mainly for us to use the author's routines. <clears throat> we have to load registers. Um, sorry about that. So, uh, right, in order to use the author's routines, certain registers have to be loaded. And so in order to preserve what's there, uh, we can use the stack to preserve what those registers um, um, have so that we can call the author's routines.